Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back into some more bite-sized business advice, and we are going to 10x your business and life today. I know that's a big goal, right? And I, I was mentioning to my guests beforehand, before we got on the show, uh, that title, that topic always terrifies me, and you know this as a listener, because I am very anti shiny entrepreneur, celebrity entrepreneur things on this show. So I promise, don't stop listening yet. I promise we are not going in that direction. We're going to talk about actual fundamental principles to grow and scale your business the right the right way. I have an amazing guest with me, Ryan Johnson. And I want to say welcome to the show and thank you for being here, Ryan. Thanks, Brandon. I appreciate it. And yes, I don't like those, those shiny uh, clickbait type of topics either. Yeah, I, I love a good clickbait title. I'll yeah. just be the first one to say that. And I'm sure if you're a listener of the show, you have picked up on that pattern by this point. But we, we are down to business here. We speak truth. We speak facts. And we want to help people grow their businesses. So tell me, we got three ways to 10x your business and your life. That is a big claim. What what do you mean by that sort of a claim? Let's start there. Sure, sure. Absolutely. Well, so um, initially, my, my three ways, I'll just put that out there first. It, you have to maximize your people. You got, you have to have great processes and you have to execute those processes. So it's not rocket science, but if you do put those things in place, you are going to 10 X, not just two X your, your processes. I love that book. Um, 10 X is better than two X. Um, all that means is you have to, you have to create a foundation to grow exponentially and not just add um, work or just, uh, you know, just do addition, you want to do multiplication. So the only way to do that is to set up a good process and a good plan and make sure you've got great people driving those, those processes that you can trust to execute. So, um, immediately the business owner, if they have a great plan, they're going to be able to start stepping away from their, uh, from their business, not, not leaving it, but just not being in it so much, you know, 60, 80 hours a week, uh, overwhelmed and stressed out and not having fun. And so immediately that's going to be 10 X because they're going to, they're going to be able to get back into a, a normal work, um, life balance. And then from there, it's up to the business. How well are they going to execute? But they have the potential to 10 X their revenue, um, instead of just limp along and just add business here and there. Yeah, that's that's the type of person that I find is always the most rewarding to work with because, first of all, it's the most common story in business ownership and entrepreneurship that you're just overworking, uh, overworked and underpaid, as a lot of people like to say. What do you find gets people into that particular situation the most, regardless of revenue, regardless of how many employees they have? I find a lot of entrepreneurs that say they work 50, 60, 70, 80 plus hours a week, and it's almost a badge of honor. H how do we get there? Yeah, well, I think it's it's the same in a in a job or their business. But a lot of a lot of people leave their jobs to start their own business for the sake of freedom. I want freedom. But what they really do is they lock themselves in a in a cage uh, because they don't have systems and processes to to run the business when they're not working on it. And and so that's um that's that's scary. And, and so we want, I want to be able to help them realize that, okay, I came to do this business, so I have more time freedom. Um, but, um, at, but at the same time, I'm not really sure how to do that. And so, yes, uh, I see that in both sides of, of, you know, on as an employee, as a W2 or a 1099 starting their own business. Um, every, every worker seems to think, my hours equate to productivity or my hours equate to my value of how much I'm going to get paid. And that is just a, that is just a, um, that's, that's not a 10 X mentality <laughs> at all. Um, because you have to work smarter, not harder. 
And if you put things, systems and processes in place, they're going to work without you. And um, just because you're not actually doing the work all the time doesn't mean your value is any less. So I, I do see that um, I was in the W2 world for a lot longer than now the entrepreneurial space. And that is that is something that really holds you um, captive. And uh, and so it's really easy to bring that into the entrepreneurial sp uh, entrepreneurial space with us. But we have to realize there's a better way. Yeah, it's that mindset of, uh, you know, being being busy equates to being productive um, or y you know how to do it. So you just do it instead of mm. building that system and, and delegating properly. I see that a lot. And the other thing I see, too, is when people come from especially the W2 or the 1099 world, into entrepreneurship and owning their own business, they they tend to underestimate what a business is in terms of the, the true structure of a business and how it needs to operate to be effective. They, they kind of just approach it with the same mindset that they would their job. Um, and that's where things fall apart. So mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of people get into entrepreneurship from that path. They've had a job at some point and they don't necessarily make that mentality shift. So Ryan, from your perspective, what's let's say someone is who's listening is in that overworked mentality mm -hmm. and overworked by their definition not ours i mean you could be overworked to 20 hours a week if that's not what you want to do you are overworked by definition what what's the first step to really figure out you know where are we right now and and then identify the strategic plan to get to where we want to be ultimately yeah that's a great question i had a um a recent client that was in in that situation and so the first thing we have to do with any strategic plan is we've got to we've got to start with the end in mind. Um, so many books, everybody talks about that, but it's 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 hard to do because when you have a vision and, you, and you're excited about something, you just want to get going. You just want to get going and want to start making money. I'm, I'm guilty of that myself. Um, but we have to slow down and say, OK, what, is, what do we want this to look like in in two to three years, five years max? Um, and then work our way backwards to so, say, okay, what's it going to take to do that? And um, it's a work in progress. I mean, you'll you'll get started, and, and all of a sudden, you'll maybe your interest will shift, maybe an opportunity will come about that that changes things a little bit. But we've got to start with that compelling vision and and mission for the for the company and for the business owner's life. That that to me, if you don't have that, you're just um, you're just going to be drifting aimlessly. Yeah, that's that's so powerful. We we've talked about that on on this show. Uh, we preach that at What If, to be quite honest with you, that we always start there. And it's funny too. I'm I'm curious to hear your experience, regardless of the client, regardless of how long they've been in business. We at least, at the very least, evaluate their mission, vision, and core values because we know it all stems from there. Um, and people push back on us. They're like, "This is kind of stupid. I want to grow my business. Why are we talking about my mission statement?" I'm like, "Just pause. Wait. Wait for it. Wait for it. We're gonna get there." Um, do you do you have that same kind of reaction when oh, you work ab with people? Absolutely. You, you almost feel like you have to justify what you're doing and, and really almost a tendency to say, well, I guess we could move. But then, no, you know how bad that could end if you don't revisit that. And, and some people have some plans, but I would say most people don't have any plans. Uh, maybe a few things sketch out in a Google Doc here or there, but that's it. But yeah, absolutely. They want to get right to the growth, but they don't understand that the foundation comes first. Even even sales and growth people that I talk to, growth executives, um, they they have to make sure that the foundation is strong or else they're not going to be their tactics aren't going to work. Um, so it all begins with an operations foundation. And you're exactly right. People just they don't think that's fancy. They don't think that's high level. They don't think it's a uh, part of a growth strategy. But it's a house of cards if you don't have that strategic growth system in place. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where you know they're sitting back in whatever room or on the other side of the phone. They're like, "How how much am I paying this guy right now to talk about my mission?" <laughs> yeah. But it it is it's it's incredibly important. And as a matter of fact, I, I I'm sure you do too, and the listener gets this all the time. The people reach out in in Facebook Messenger and LinkedIn, and they want to sell you their their marketing service and um, you know, th this many booked calls per month, I've started to, to reply to these people just, just to be curious. And yeah. I'm like, Hey, just a quick question. What do you do as far as evaluating whether or not a company has the ability to scale mm. and, and has the ability to accept 20 to 30 new leads 
a week. Yeah. And the the blank stare I get through the chat window is <laughs> incredible. So I want to ask you that question. I mean, how do you how are you identifying? Because I know you have a much different process than they do, yeah. whether or not a company is truly able to scale and and what is the current foundation that we're building on? Yeah, that's a great question. That's and and you're exactly right. Yeah, you, you can't if you don't have a good systems and processes, it doesn't matter how good a lead generation system is going to work. You're not going to be able to close deals. So, um, yeah, so that that's a great point for for me. Um, uh, the the first thing we have to do is really make sure that um, that like like we said that the processes are in place there. But when I'm talking to, to a client, um, I want to make sure they're all in on on the mission and the vision. I want to make sure they're all in on those, those preliminary stages. Do you understand that you need your people uh, to really uh, be at top notch to execute this strategy? If they're, if they're not wanting to, to talk about mission and vision or not want to talk about training and developing their people and coaching their people, then they're not a good, not, not a good fit for me. Um, Cause what I'm trying to do, I'm, I'm a former baseball coach. So um, and, and professional baseball players. So I understand the prep work, the coaching, the, the game planning, uh, the strategy that goes beyond behind winning a game. You don't just roll up and, and expect to win. And uh, you have to do your preparation well before the game, but then also the day of the game. And so if, if a leader is just looking for a quick fix, then that's not a good fit for me. Uh, I'm looking for someone that wants to go deep and, and get to the root causes and fix those root causes uh, to grow and scale their business. It's really the only way to grow when you have mm -hmm. the, the people who are looking for that. I think you said it before the shiny object stuff. And, and it's just like, you want more leads, you want more sales, you want more revenue. And you say, so what? Well, so I can get out of the business. Mm -hmm. Who's going to like, are you going to set up a, a system to run, to have the business run without you, yeah. which makes us look forward to kind of that, that other end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. We're all going to exit our business, right? We're, we're all, whether whether by choice or or by death. So it will happen. But when we get there, and I think a lot of people who are overworked in that you know, 40, 50 plus hours a week mindset, they think that that's the way out. They think that they can just, okay, you know what? I've, I've had enough of this. I'm stressed. I'm overworked. I want to sell my business. Mm -hmm. And then they come to find out you can't sell that kind of a business because yeah. no one wants to buy a job. Mm -hmm. um, so what what do you have to do in terms of being being the overworked center of the business to get it to sellable what do we really have to focus on and and let me ask you this too because i think this is going to really disappoint a lot of people what's the timeline behind that mm -hmm. yeah great questions um first they have to create an org chart <laughs> with all of the jobs and responsibilities and make sure their name is not in most of them um and that's that that's going to take a while because you can't just go out and just hire everybody unless unless you're really stacking up cash. And um, most people that don't have systems and processes are, are pretty much spending what they have anyway. So that's probably not possible. Uh, but that org chart is going to really help map out, OK, what what do I need to do here and how much am I really doing? Um, so I love to do that. I love that approach. Um, and then the second. Uh, second part to your to your question, how long could this take? Um, I talk to a lot of business uh, coaches that focus on exits and transactions, that sort of thing. Um, some of them won't even work with businesses um, three to five years in advance of a sale, um, which is which is crazy. Some some will do, you know, one to two years, but most are in that three to five. And then some, if they're really complex businesses, they're talking, they, they want to start having those conversations at five to 10 years, uh, which is, which is crazy, but people are looking to do that. So many, so many businesses are out there. A serial entrepreneur um, will buy and sell, you know, three to five or, or create and, and sell three to five businesses in, in their, in their lifetime. Um, and, and some much more than that. So, so they understand the process, but um, somebody, yeah, I had somebody reach out to me on LinkedIn recently and we, we connected and they said, hey, I'm looking to sell my business in the fall. It was in the early spring. Um, what do I do? And uh, and so I, I graciously got them connected with an exit planner 
and and t- and they and they graciously declined and they said there's just there's just no way um you've got a lot more to do than that so yeah i think that shocks a lot of people i've had a few people that are friends that have sold businesses and they're they've had to work in the business as a job for 18 to 24 months after that because they were essentially doing all this stuff that they could have done beforehand and they could have just had a an easy exit, but uh, they became an employee, uh, exactly the thing they didn't want to do in the first place. Yeah, it's a disaster. And I, I, I hate seeing people in that position. I was fortunate enough to uh, sell my business last year, not have to be an employee. Um, and it was, it was one of those moments that was like pure euphoria when it happens, because I, I was not working in the business day to day. And it was, it's why you build a business, right? It's to have that potential to sell it, to, to give it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I, it was, when I started the conversation with the broker, I was very much in the business and I had to go through that transition. Um, thankfully it didn't take three to five years, but Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people get in that position of the, the picture you just painted where it's, Mm -hmm. it's the spring. I want to sell in the fall. It's just not feasible. So help me understand a little bit. Please don't give names or, or, yeah. details but what what was that person's day-to-day looking like if if you know this stuff that the broker even just turned them down and said it's not possible yeah um well all of the everything all the relationships the business relationships uh stemmed uh from the owner like there was mm-hmm. no repeatable system there was no repeatable delivery if if that person was not doing the work then they weren't interested you know that sort of thing so um so very much a um a very small agency model that um that all of the delivery depended on on that owner so um that's just that's just one example um i can give you another fun example though that i heard um, from a from a group um that i that i i was introduced to as a business transition group and um, there was a, a fun story uh, because this this transition group is is helping small business owners do this like they're just educating them and uh there was a business a family-owned business um and and the father was the owner obviously and and the son was the ceo um and the communication wasn't real great because the the father just solicited uh, private equity firms to sell the sell the business without discussing this with his son the ceo and so he came, the son came in and real and walked into a conversation in the boardroom about selling. He's like, Hey son, uh, have a seat. We're going to sell to these guys, uh, for, for this amount of money, I think it was $8 million. Um, and, and he expected them to be happy about it. He says, no, well, you can find, um, a new CEO because I'm, I'm not into this. We're not ready to do this. And, uh, and he's like, Whoa, Whoa. whoa okay. So they have a private conversation. He says, well, I'll sell to you for $8 million. He said, okay great give me you know six months pull pull together the funding he does that and then within uh a year i think it was 18 months he sold that business uh for like 35 million dollars um to the highest broker because obviously this is a this is not a normal situation but none of the there was so much more to do to make sure the business operated with without them to really have a a a private equity firm come in and say wow this is this is a plug and play situation. We see exactly how much we're going to make in the next couple of years. This is a this is a no brainer. Um, so that's just the power of having a packaged business that you can pass off to somebody. Um, they don't have to do anything. They just step in um, and, and it just keeps running. That's incredible. I mean, that's that's exactly what we all should be wanting to build. Right. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, whether it's you know, lack of lack of foresight or maybe lack of time and effort to put into building that type of a business and a structure. I just see too many people getting stuck. And that's why I love having these conversations because hopefully it opens someone's eyes to say like, you know what, I don't want to be doing this forever uh, or I don't want to be in this role forever. And I'd love to find a way out. So um, Ryan, I know you have, we could, we could talk for hours on this stuff. I know you have a, uh, a way for people to take that first step and get out. I put your website on the screen here, um, but t- tell the listener who is in that position. What do you have at this, uh, at this site to go download? Absolutely. Yeah. I love, I love giving um, people a framework to step through to see if, if something works for them. So at this website, three sparrows, es.com slash framework, uh, you can download three ske- three steps to scale your business to 10 million. 
Um, that is uh, essentially the first level of sustainability in a business and um, no email required. It's just a short explanation uh, of each of the three P's that I talked about, people, processes, and productivity, and then a short assessment, five questions per uh, each of those P's. And uh, this, will, they will, this will let them know where they are. Uh, is the business functioning properly and efficiently, or do they need help uh, getting up to that next, next level? And if they do, they can uh, schedule a free strategy session with me from there. So I hope this will really add a lot of value to your audience. I love it. I appreciate that. Thank you. And it's wherever you're watching or if you're listening, you don't see it on the screen. It's, it's down below in the show notes. Um, so you can go click over there and check it out. Um, Ryan, I appreciate that offer. And I also want to say, um, you know, I, I love connecting with people with where they're at. I find a lot of people are in this position. I'm sure you do too. We, you've told stories about how people are in this very position. But I want to end the episode with a question. I personally believe that powerful questions get powerful answers. Mm -hmm. And I want to know for the listener, what is that question that they should be asking themselves if they do find themselves in that position of working too much or not being able to sell their business, not being able to get out of the operations of their business? Mm -hmm. What should they be asking themselves until they get that powerful answer? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I, I love that. Um, I think they have to they have to ask themselves what what do I want out of, out of my life? Um, do I want to continue to be a slave to my, to my business or do I want to, um, do I want to maximize it for, for, um, my family? You know, um, do I want to maximize it for, uh, a legacy that I want to leave? Um, so again, be, begin with the end in mind, what do I want out of this business and what am I willing to do, uh, to get there? But then also um, a follow-up question would be, um, what's the risk if I don't? What's going to happen if I continue doing this? And, and in my, my opinion, it's going to be burnout and, uh, and a lot of uh, lost relationships along the way. So um, yeah, what, what do they want to accomplish in their life and how can they get there? Yeah, those are, those are definitely powerful questions. And I've seen I've seen the burnout and the business failures. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely think of those, th think about those questions and come up with honest answers for yourself. Ryan, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure, Brandon. I appreciate you very much. For those of you watching and listening, wherever you are, make sure you subscribe, give us a rating. It helps us connect with more people just like you. And we'll see you tomorrow on the next episode of Harmonious at Launch. Thanks for being here.